All right, we're in college algebra, and we're doing linear equations applications, lesson 1.2. We're going to take our skills we've learned of how to solve linear equations, and we're going to do actual real-life problems, apply these to real-life problems. All right, so here's what we've got first off. Uh, the winner of a 100-mile race drove his car to victory at a rate of 132.0384 miles per hour. What was his time to the nearest thousandth of an hour? What was his time? Okay, now what we have here is a simple distance equals rate times time. Distance equals rate times time. This is distance, how far you go, your rate, which is how fast you drive, and your time, which is how long you drive. This is really easy to figure out. You guys probably do this yourself. Uh, like, for instance, if I drive 60 miles per hour, that's my rate. And I do that for three hours. How far do I go? Well, 60 times 3 is 180. My distance would be 180. So uh, that's what we would get if you put these values in. Uh, you also could do this. Distance equals rate times time. Suppose your distance was uh, 200 miles. You have to go 200 miles to visit your friend. Okay? You're going to drive at a rate of 70 miles per hour. How much time will it take for you to get there? So on this one, since my variable T over here is 70 times, it, I would divide by 70 which makes this cancel. And then over here, 20 or 200 divided by 70. Put that in. Okay, 200 divided by 70. And it looks like 2.8, 2.85 hours. Okay, so this is just things we might do all the time that we don't even really know we're solving an equation, but Anyway, in this problem here, this the winner of this race, it was a 100-mile race, and he drove this fast. So distance equals rate times time. Well, this is something we just did. The distance is 100 miles. The rate is this 132.0384. T is what we don't know. All right, so all I have to do is I divide both sides by 132.0384. And this will cancel over here, and T equals, now I divide that. So let me get my calculator on, because I don't know that off the top of my head. 100 divided by 132.0384. And when I do that, I get... 0.7573554436. That's what my calculator says. Okay, now look what this says. This is round to the nearest thousandth. Nearest thousandth. All right, now what I always do is this is thousand with it on it. Thousand. And this is thousand right here. Thousand. And see how many zeros it has? It has three zeros. All right, the thousandth is the third decimal place. So in my answer here, I'll go one, two, three. I'm going to keep these three right here. So I look at this fourth one. Does this three make the seven go up or stay? Well, it makes it stay. It's got to be five or greater to make it go up. So this being a three makes it stay, so it's 0.757, which is what my answer is right there. Okay. So distance equals rate times time is a very useful equation that we'd use sometimes when we're traveling. Okay, so let's go to this next one here. Uh, $380 is invested for one year at 8% simple interest. How much interest is earned? Okay. All right, here's the equation. Interest equals principal times rate times time. This is an equation we use every day because we borrow money or we have investments that we earn interest on. Most times though we borrow money and we're paying interest. 
And that's what we want to try to get out of. We want to try to earn interest instead of paying interest. But what this is, is like, suppose you, uh, you have a principal of $2,000. So you borrow $2,000. That's your principal. All right. Suppose you got this at a rate of 6%, which is 0 0.06. 6% we would move the decimal back two places, which is 0 0.06. So that's what I have there. And suppose you uh, borrow this money for two years. So I put two for my T. How much interest am I going to have to pay? Just doing simple interest. So I would just multiply these. All right. 2,000 times 0 0.06 times two. And that comes out to $240. That's how much interest I would pay. Okay, so that's how we deal with interest, and we we uh, get into that rut where we borrow money all the time. But anyway, on this one, three hundred eighty dollars is invested, so we're going to earn interest here. It's invested for one year at eight percent simple interest. How much interest is earned? So I'm going to do this again here. Uh, all right, so interest equals principal times rate, times time. 380 is invested, so that's my principal, $380. The rate, right there, it says 8%, which is 0 0.08. Now, let me do this again here. 8%, here's my decimal right there. I'm going to have to move it back two places, which i got to put a zero in there. That's 0 0.08. So, this is 0 0.08. And then my time, all right, now I think it just said one year. Uh, oh yeah, one year right there. So my time is one. All right, what's my interest over here? So I'll just multiply those up. All right, so let's do this here. 380 times 0 0.08 times one. And that's 30.4, which I put my zero on there to make this dollars and cents, thirty dollars and forty cents, which is what my answer is. Okay. Okay. Now on this right here, how much pure acid is in seven hundred eighty milliliters of a eleven percent solution? Okay. All right. So you're Acid is going to equal uh, how much you have, your quantity, times your percentage. So this is just an easy way to figure this out. Your acid, your, your pure acid equals your quantity, how much you have, times your percentage of solution. So in this one, how much pure acid is in... So how much pure acid is in 780 milliliters, which is your quantity, times your 0.11. This is 11%. There's my decimal. I move it back two places, which would be 0.11. Okay, so I'm just going to do 780. So let me type in here 780 times 0.11. Okay, and uh, right there, 85.8. .8. So there you go. There's my answer. Okay, now if we go down here to number four, a rectangle has a width of 56 centimeters and a perimeter of 226 centimeters. Perimeter, if you remember now, perimeter is the distance around something. Okay, now this is a rectangle, so let me just draw this out. Here's my rectangle, okay? All right, it says it has a width of 56, so here's my 56. Well, if my width is 56, that means this over here is 56. Then it says the perimeter is 226. So what I'm going to do is 56 and 56. If I do 56 times 2, okay, I'm going to get 112. Okay, so these two together are 112. All right, so if I take 226 and I minus 112, that means I'm going to have 114 left over for these two sides. 114, so I'm just going to divide it by 2. 
114 divided by 2 would be 57. So this is 57, and that's 57. So this one here, I didn't even set up an equation to solve it. This is probably easier to think about it this way rather than setting up an equation. Okay. But what you could do is you could do the perimeter of a rectangle is going to be 2 times whatever your length is plus 2 times whatever the width is. Okay, and we could just solve the equation. All right, which means we would, uh, my perimeter is 226, so I put 226 there. My length is what I don't know. My width is 56. So I can just set up the equation right here. And we're going to do the same stuff that we just did a minute ago, but so I got 226 equals 2L plus, if I multiply there, I get 112. And then solving this, I'm going to minus 112. Since I got my L right there, I'm just going to leave my L, just get rid of the 112, which is going to be, what is that, 114? Okay. And then I'll divide by 2, which is 57. Okay, uh, cut it right off a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right. A second side of a triangular deck is three feet longer than the shortest side, and the third side is three feet shorter than twice the length of the shortest side. If the perimeter of the deck is 52 feet, what are the lengths of the three sides? All right, we're going to set up an equation and solve this one. Let's see. So we have the perimeter equals, and we got a triangle here, so it's all three sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, uh, side one plus side two plus side three. Okay, so my three sides add up to what my perimeter is. Okay. And I've got this told to me here. Now let's read this again. The second side. So the second side of the deck is three feet longer than the shortest side. The third side is three feet shorter than twice the length of the shortest side. So what we got here now, we've got this short side. So I'm going to have the short one be X. Okay. The short one's going to be X. Which means here's my short one. This is X. And the second one is three feet longer than that. So that means this is going to be X plus three. Well, that's what the second side is. It's three feet longer than the shortest side. The shortest side is X. So this is X plus three. Now the third side, third side it says, is three feet shorter than twice the length of the shortest side. So it's going to be twice what the shortest side is. So it's going to be two X. But it's, but it's uh, three feet shorter, so I'm going to minus three. Okay, and that's what my perimeter is. Well, my perimeter, it says, is 52 right there. This is 52 equals all three of these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my like terms together. So I've got an X here plus an X there plus two X. That's going to be four X's. Then I've got three plus a negative three, which is a zero. So 52 equals 4x. So I just divide by 4. And there you go. x is 13. Okay. So that means my shortest side was x. The shortest side is 13. The second side, right here's my second one. 13 plus 3 would be 16. And the third side, here's my third side right there. 2 times 13 is 26, minus 3 is 23. And there's my three sides right there. And of course, there's my answers, so we're good to go. Okay. Now let's go to 6 here. 6 is one people have trouble with sometimes. Look at here, Margaret. Let me move it up a little bit. Margaret drove to a business appointment at 50 miles per hour. Her average speed on the return trip was 40 miles per hour. The return trip took one half hour longer because of heavy traffic. How far did she travel to the appointment? 
Now, here's the thing. All right, Margaret drove to this appointment. So here she is here. She went to this appointment over here, this place. And then she comes back. All right, these two distances would have to be the same. When she goes there, when she comes back, that's the same distance. So if you look at this little box it has over here set up for you. Okay, this little box right here. Here's our morning trip. And of course, we, we're doing distance, so distance is rate times time. Okay. So if I look here on the morning trip, she went 50 miles per hour, and her time was X. We're not sure how long she went. So that means her distance is going to be 50 times X, which is 50 X. I'm going to put that in here. Okay. Now on the return trip in the afternoon, she went 40 miles per hour. I guess it's more traffic. She couldn't go as fast. But look here now. It says in the problem here that the return trip took one half hour longer because of heavy traffic. All right, so that means it took X amount there, but it's plus an extra half hour. So it's X plus one half. So my distance is going to be my rate times my time. Here's my rate. There's my time. So I multiply those, which means I have 40 times this, which means I'm going to have to distribute 40 times X is 40 X. 40 times one half would be 20. Okay. And now my distance in the morning should be the same as my distance in the afternoon. I set these two equal. Okay. So that means I'm going to have 50 X equals 40 X plus 20. And now I just solve this right here. So I'm just going to minus 40 X because I got to have my X's all on one side. I can't have them on two sides. Here's my equal C. That goes away. 50 X minus 40 X is 10 X equals 20. And there you go. I divide both sides by 10. And X equals 2. So it took two hours. Now that's not your answer here. See, look what it's asking. How far did she travel? Well, see, X is 2, which X, see over here, look, that's my time on the trip there. So if I put 2 right here, 50 times 2 would be 100. This is 100 miles. There's my answer, 100. It's 100 miles. Okay, so 2 is what X is, but you got to think X is not what this is asking for here in the question. X is the time, and it wants the distance traveled, which is 100. Okay. Now, 7 right here is another one that people have trouble with. So let's talk about it. How many gallons of 80% antifreeze solution must be mixed with 70 gallons of 30% antifreeze to get a mixture that is 70% antifreeze? Now, uh, when you put antifreeze in your car, you know, you've got to keep antifreeze in there. You can buy it at the store that is straight 100% antifreeze. Okay, and then you dilute it down to make it, usually we do 50-50. 50% antifreeze, 50% 50 water. Anyway, this says how many gallons of an 80% antifreeze must be mixed with 70 gallons of a 30% antifreeze to get a mixture that's 70%, okay? This says use the six step method. So we've got this over here. Okay, let me get over here and we see this. So we wanna know how many gallons of this 80% must be mixed with 70 gallons of the 30% to achieve here, we want a mixture that's 70%, okay? Which means if I have X gallons of this 80% antifreeze and I mix it with the 70 gallons of the 30%, I'm going to have X plus 70 gallons once, once I'm done doing that. So how many gallons I'm going to mix with this? When I mix them, I'm going to have whatever that is plus 70. So if I mix 10 gallons with this, 10 plus 70 would be 8. I'd have 80 gallons. Or if this 80%, suppose I have 100 gallons of that. Well, 100 plus 70 would be 170. So I'm going to end up with X plus 70 gallons. And so what I have is this right here. 80% times X is 0.80X. 30% 80 
times 70, point 0.30 times 70. All right, just punch it on your calculator, point 0.30 times 70. Okay, that's uh, 80, that's 21. And then point 0.70 times this, all right, so it's gonna be point 0.70 times x plus 70. So I'm gonna distribute there. So let me set this up over here. These two here, 80x, 0.80x plus 21, 0.80x plus 21 is going to equal this right here, 0.70 times x plus 70. Okay, and that's how you set this thing up. All right, so you use the table here. You multiply these, you multiply those, and then you multiply these, which is this right here. And you set this equation up. These two equals this. All right, so I need to distribute this. So I got 0.80x plus 21 equals, all right, I'll distribute, so that's going to be 0.70x, and 0.70 times 70 is going to be 49. Okay. And now here's my equal C, and I got x's on both sides, so I'm going to have to minus 0.70x. 0.70 minus 0.70 is 0. 80, 0.80 minus 0.70 is 0.10x. Okay. And then I'll minus the 21. 0.10x equals 28. And then divide by 0.10. 28 divided by 0.10 is 280. And that's how many gallons I need. There's my answer over here. So we got it right. But that's what we would do here. So these mixture problems, there's going to be a, a, a few of these. And here's this. Okay. Here's another one. How much water should be added to 16 milliliters of 11% alcohol solution to reduce the concentration to 8%? We do this uh, like if we're trying to make some sanitizer, you know, like uh, to clean our hands, sanitizer. You could take straight alcohol and you can dilute it down to get the uh, percentage that you need for the sanitizer. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, we could set it up like we did a while ago. Let's just do this. How much water... All right, how much acid is in water? Okay, we have how much water, we don't know. And how much acid is in water? Well, it's none, it's zero percent. So how much water times zero percent acid must be added, so must be added to 16 milliliters of 11%. To reduce the concentration to 8%, which means we're going to have 0 0.08. And when I add these together, I've got X milliliters of the water and 16 milliliters of the alcohol solution, which means I'm going to have X plus 16 milliliters altogether when I add it. Okay, so again, let's look at this again, how I set this up. How much water should be added to this? So how much water... How much we don't know, so it's X, and water is 0% alcohol. Water has no alcohol in it. If it did, we'd be drinking water instead of beer, <laughs> if it had any alcohol in it, but it has no alcohol in it. So, how much water times 0% alcohol? How much of that should be added to 16 milliliters of 11% alcohol? Okay, so, point, so 16 times 0.11. To reduce the cuts, so make it equal to 8%, so it's 0.08, and when I add these together, I got X milliliters of this, and I got 16 milliliters of that, so it's X plus 16, so there's how I set up the equation. Okay, now solving this, X times 0 is 0, so that just goes away. 16 times 0.11, all right, let's bring the calculator back in here, 16 times 0.11, Okay, 1.76, so this is 1.76 equals, I distribute here, 
0.08 times x, and then 0.08 times 16, uh, I think it's 1.28, I think. 0.08 times 16, yep, 1.28. And there you go, we just solved the equation like we've been doing. So I'm just going to minus 1.28 on both sides. This goes away. And uh, this is 0.08x. And over here, this is going to be 86.48. And I divide by 0 0.08 on both sides. This cancels. And when I divide here, I get 6. And that's my answer, 6. So we're good. Well, so in other words, we need 6 milliliters of water to mix with this alcohol to reduce the concentration down to 8%. We need six milliliters. All right. Uh, number nine. In playing her retirement, Liza deposits some money at 4.5% interest with twice as much deposit at 5%. Find the amount deposited at each rate if the total annual interest income is 1595. Okay, and here's my answer right there, 11,000 and 22,000, but how do we get those? All right, now this is interest. So if you remember, interest equals principal times rate times time. Okay. Now, in this problem here, the key to this is uh, okay, this is the total annual interest income is this. The total annual, which means we're talking about a year. So this is one year. It says the total annual, which is one year. So my time is one. So now what that means is, since time is one, I really don't have to have it. I just can leave it off. So interest equals my principal times my rate, since I'm just talking about one year. Annual. Okay? So that means... She's got some money at 4.5% 4, 4 and twice as much at 5%. Okay, so she's got some money here, so it means she's got X amount here. So that means her principal is going to be X times 4.5%. If I move my decimal back two places, that's 0 0.045. And this is how much interest she's going to earn in that one. See, this is my principal times my rate. So this is my interest on that one. But she's got twice as much here. So if I put X there, that means it's going to have twice of it over here. So 2X there. So I'm going to have 2X times 5%, which is 0.05 when I move the decimal back two places. So here's how much interest she makes there. Okay. Well, it says our total annual interest is right here, $15.95. So if I add these two together, it's going to equal $15.95. Okay, and there you go. That's how I set it up. And so we solve this. So right here, this is going to be 0.045x plus right here, this is going to be 0.10x or just 0.1x. And now these are like terms, so I just add them together. So it's going to be 0.145x equals 15.95. Okay. And then I'll divide by 0.145. And this cancels. The good thing about these videos is if it's something you don't understand, you can pause at any time to look at this a minute. So it makes sense. Then you can rewind it and watch it again. So... Uh, now if I do this right here, let's see here, 15.95 divided by 0.145, and uh, oh, oh, made a mistake there, 11,000. So X is 11,000, which means that's how much she put at this first one. So this is 11,000 in the first one at 4.5%, and then twice as much, so two times X. 2 times x would be 22,000. 22,000 at 5%, which is what my answers are. So.
They're in good shape there. Uh, here's another one like we did earlier. So I'll, I'll let you try this one, okay? You can pause it. You can see the answer right here, okay? Margaret drove to the, this is just like we did a while ago. So there's the answer. You can try setting this up yourself. There's the box. So you can pause it and try to do it yourself, okay? Okay. Now, number 11. This is another uh, solution one with the antifreeze. Okay. How many gallons of 90% antifreeze solution must be mixed with 70 gallons of 15% antifreeze to get a mixture that is 80% antifreeze? Use a six-step method like we did earlier. Here's the answer. So you could pause this and look at this and then try to see if you get that answer there. Okay. Let's go to 12. Ralph Chase plans to sell a piece of property for $155,000. He wants the money to be paid off in two ways. One would be a short-term note at 9% interest, and then two, a long-term note at 7% interest. Find the amount of each note if the total annual interest is paid in, is a $12,550. So the annual, we're talking about one year. So interest equals principal times rate times time, but my time is one year, so I don't have to worry about that since it's just one, because one times this is the same thing. So it being one, I can just not worry about that. Okay. All right, well, it's got this set up over here. Principal times rate times time. See, it, it, it didn't take them off, but these being ones here, we don't have to necessarily worry about those. But my principal times my rate. See, he's a... Uh, He's got $155,000 he's going to take. So part of this money he's going to put in this 9% interest, and then the rest of it he's going to put in the 7% interest, which means this right here. He's going to put X amount of it in the 9% interest, and he's going to put $155,000 minus whatever that X amount is in the 7% interest. What this means is suppose he puts $55,000 in the first one, okay, in the 9%. If he puts 55,000 in, that means he's got 100,000 in the other one. So it's 155,000 minus 55,000, which would be 100,000 here, okay? Suppose he put $100,000 in this 9%. So 155,000 minus 100,000 would be 55,000 he would have here. So this is how you would set that up. So that means my interest in, in the first one, which was be 0.09x, so 0.09x, that would be my interest earned in the first investment or the first payoff way, the short-term note, plus uh, 0.07 times 155,000 minus x. That would be my interest in the other one. So here's my two interests. which it shows it right here, multiplying them up. Well, if I add these two together, it's going to equal the 12,550. Okay, and that's how you set it up right there. Maybe I should have wrote this over here. Where it so it's going to be 0.09x plus 0 0.07. That's how you set it up. Now distribute and solve. So we got 0.09x plus, let's bring my calculator here, 0.07 times 155,000. All right, this is going to be 10,850. 0.07 times, I'm distributing. So 0.07 times negative x is negative 0.07x. There we go. Okay, and I got like terms right here. So 0 0.09 minus 0 0.07 is 0 0.02x. Okay, and now minus this. 
this will go away. So 0 0.02 x equals. All right, so I subtract this 0, 0, that's going to be 7, 1700. And now divide by 0 0.02. Okay. I don't know if I'm getting this right. Eighty-five thousand. I got it right, I think. There you go. So there's what X is. So apparently he put eighty-five thousand in the first investment. This would be eighty-five thousand. And then if I do one hundred fifty-five thousand minus that. I get 70,000. And that's what my answers were. See, we got that right. Now you might have to play that over again to maybe understand a little better, but anyway, that's what you would do on that kind of problem. Okay. All right, we're getting down to here this number 13. All right, this looks like a long problem here. Membership warehouse clubs offer shoppers low prices along with rewards of cash back on club purchases. If you were like our member of Sam's, you have to pay a membership fee. But being in Sam's, you get discounts. You know, you get to buy these discounted items. Okay. Well, how much do you have to spend for it to be worth it? You know, that's the thing. Uh, this says if the yearly fee for a warehouse club membership is $100 and the reward reward rate is 4% on club purchases for the year, then the linear function right here, linear equation, this models the actual yearly cost of the membership, Y, in dollars, where X represents the yearly amount of club purchases, also in dollars. So what this means is it's going to cost you $100 to be in this club. Okay, but you're going to get a discount of 4% of your purchases. So, uh, part A says determine the actual the cost of membership if the club purchases for the year were $1,900. So, if I spend $1,900, that's my X. All right, so if I just punch that in, 100 minus 0 0.04 times 1,900. If I punch that in, 24. That means the actual cost is $24, which means I've spent $24 to buy this stuff, and so it's actually costed me more money. I've spent $24 to be a member in this club because I've saved, apparently I've saved, you can look at it like this, if I just do 0 0.04 times 1900 Okay, I get 76. That's how much money I've saved. I've, I spent $100 to save $76, which means it's costed me $24 to be in this club. Okay. Now, what if I spent $3,000? What if I spent $3,000? All right. So if I put $3,000 in there, 100 minus 0 .04 times 3,000, Okay, and then look at this. I get negative 20, which means I'm $20 ahead now because my cost to be in this club is a negative number, which means I've saved more money than what I've spent to be in the club. Now, if I just put 3,000 right here, like I did while I go, 0 0.04 times 3,000, which means I save $120. So I spent, a, I spent 100 to be in the club, and I save $120, which means it's actually costed me negative $20 being this club. So being in the club saved me $20 in the long run. That's what it did. So I'm $20 less is my uh, cost to this. I've saved $20. All right, now part B says, what amount of club purchases would reduce the actual yearly cost of membership to $44? So what that is right here, where the Y is, if I put 44 right there, let me get a piece of paper here. If I put 44 where Y is, OK, 
okay? How much do I have to spend to where my cost is only $44? So I'm just gonna solve this equation right here. So I'm gonna minus 100 on both sides. That'll go away. So that's gonna be negative 56 equals negative 0.04x. And then I divide by negative 0.04. This will cancel. And let's see here. That's going to be 1400 I think. Let me punch it in there. Negative 56 divided by negative 0 0.04. Yep, 1400 Okay, so I have to spend 1400 for it to bring my cost down to $44 to be in this club. Okay, now... The next one is one everybody wants to know. The next one here. How much would a member have to spend in yearly club membership and yearly club purchases to reduce the yearly membership cost to zero dollars? So how much do you have to spend till you break even so it's costing you nothing to be in there? So what I'm going to do is I want this to be zero. So how much X is how much I spend, how much do I have to spend to where I save $100, which means I'm not spending anything at all. I'm not spending anything at all to be in this club. All right, so I would minus 100. That goes away, so I got negative 100 equals negative 0.04X. And then I divide by negative 0.04. Cancels off and X equals, all right, so I divide this, that's going to be $2,500. So I have to spend $2,500 to break even and not have any cost at all to be in this membership. Okay. So if you notice now, if I put right there for X, just in this right here, I put $2,500 in there. 0 0.04 times 2,500. That's $100. I'm going to save $100, which means I'm spending $100 to be in the club, so that means I'm just canceled out with nothing. It's no cost at all to be in the club. Uh, and here's the last one. We're uh, going to finish up. This graph shows a projection in total enrollment of degree granting institutions from fall 2003 to fall 2012. So you can see here in this graph the numbers, how they're going up and stuff in 2003, 2006, and 7, and so on. So it's telling us this equation right here. Y equals... 0.2006x plus 15.75. Okay. It says use the model to determine the projected enrollment for the fall of 2008. So, uh, what you got to do is now, right here, if you notice, x equals 0 represents 2003. Okay. X equals 1 is 2004. So what I could do right here, this would be 0 for X. This would be 1. This would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. Okay? So this question is asking, use the model here, which is this equation here, to determine the enrollment for 2008. Well, in 2008, that means X is 5, so I just put 5 right there. So let's try this. Let's put a 5 right there where x is. 0 0.2006 times 5 plus 15.75. Okay. And there you go. I get 16.753. 16.753. Okay. It, uh, type an integer or a decimal rounded to the nearest tenth. So the tenth, now remember 10 just has one zero. So here's my tenth right here. Okay, so now does this five make the seven go up or stay? Well, it makes it go up. So it'd be 16.8. So this is 16.8 million. Which uh, 
is a little bit off from what the graph says, but I believe that is my answer here. You can see down at the bottom, it does say 16.8. So using the model is gonna be a little, little bit off from what the graph is. That says use a model to determine which year the enrollment is projected to reach 17 million. If you look at the uh, thing here, 17 million is going to happen between 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our model, though. It says use the model. And when's the enrollment going to be 17 million? So I'm going to put 17 for Y. So I'm going to have this right here. We'll put 17 for Y. I'm going to solve this. All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I didn't leave put my X in there. I'm going to minus 15.75. I got 0.2006X equals. Over here, when I subtract this, this is going to be 1.25. I'm going to divide by 0.2006. Make this cancel. All right, now let's punch this in. 1.25 divided by, and it's a 0 0.2006, and I get this right here, 6.23, one and three and so on. But anyway, uh, if you notice on part B here, it says round down to the nearest year. What this means right here, you round down because this is 6.23. It's in year six. It hasn't made it to year seven yet. So we're going to round down to six. If this was 6.7, just say it was 6.7. It hasn't made it to year seven yet. So you would round down in this case because it you wouldn't round up because you're not in the seventh year yet. You're still in year six. If this was 6.999, it's not year seven yet, so it would round down to six. So this one, we want to round down, which would be six. If you look at what I wrote up here a while ago, which is uh, 2009. So my answer is 2009. Okay, which you see the answer down here, 2009. Okay, and then part C here. How do your answers in parts A and B compare? Well, they are quite close. I mean, these numbers are off a little bit, but they are very close. So the answer is they are quite close. And that's what we got here. They are quite, quite close. Now, the last one here, I thought that was the last one. D is the last one. The enrollment in fall 1993 was 14.3 million. The model here is based on data from 2003 to 2012. If you were to use the model for 1993, what would the enrollment be? All right, so... In other words, we're going to solve this thing again. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, instead of the 17 right there, like we did a minute ago, I'm going to put 14.3. Okay. And then we're going to solve, solve this. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I would minus 15.75. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing here? Okay. I, I, I misread this. I screwed up. This says the enrollment in 1993 was 14.3 million. Okay. Now, it says if you use the model, what would it say the enrollment would be? So, in other words, in 1993, okay, in 1993, what would X be here? All right, so if I go back up to my thing, if 2003 is zero, if I go back, 2002 would be negative one, 2001 would be negative two, and if I count them back, I think 1993 would be negative 10. So, that's, I made a mistake there. That'd be negative 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put negative 10 in for X here. So that's a lot simpler than what I started to do. So times negative 10 
plus 15.75 and I get 13.744. All right, so in 1993, that means X would be negative 10. If I go up here and I just count this off, X would be negative 10. And if I put negative 10 in for X, I get 13.744, which it says 13.744. This is around to the nearest tenth, okay? Which means 10 has one zero, so I just want one decimal place. Does the four make the seven go up? No, it stays, so 13.7. All right, so this is all the applications that we're doing, and uh, I hope you have a great day. And, uh, I guess that's it. I can't find my paper I was going to put on here. But you have a great day.